understand specifically today we're toasting to history as well and a very important region in the California wine world and in the wine world at large, which is the Russian River. And what we just did started eight centuries ago in Burgundy. And we're still doing it today. And this is a very interesting way of, of welcoming friends. The Duke of Burgundy in 1240, as you know, started this and we continued onwards. And for some of you who don't exactly know the story, when you cheer, you know, you know why we cheer, right? And why we look at each other in the eye. Let's do it. Let's practice. So we look at each other deep in the eyes. In the old days, I'm talking from the 13th century to the 16th century, you know, we used to win territories in Europe by poisoning one another. So, <laughs> so it's a, a great exercise, right? And I can tell you many counties and how Burgundy became even bigger thanks to that. So one way, as the Duke of Burgundy were receiving, you know, they had glass came a little later, you know, 15th, 16th century, we used to have those opaque cups, terracotta, wood, sometimes silver, gold, and all kinds of... So you couldn't see, but when someone puts a little poison in your glass, it creates a little cloud. I don't invite you to try that tonight, but it would create a cloud and you would notice, but if you have a cup, you don't. So we started cheering like this. One, we would hope that there's liquid going in each other's glass. So we both go, if, you know... <laughs> Or, you know, so we look at each other in the, in the eyes so you see if there's anything wrong. And second, you smell. In those days, they couldn't care less as a bouquet or the wine. <laughs> they were really interested in, in having the other person go first and looking if there was a cloud. And then they were tasting. So that's how the cheer started. But the Duke of Burgundy really were very concerned doing a lot of events that would happen. So they always had two glasses in their hands. Burgundy produces white and red, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. So they were keeping always their glass very, very close. So they were doing this, <laughs> clapping, and obviously doing that, and then starting again. And white's an interesting story because it disappeared for like three centuries as a tradition. And for all of you who love wine, this is probably the only world symbol that the finest collectors around the planet recognize and remember. Because in 1932, Burgundy were living a very difficult time between the two wars. And it's hard to imagine today, 2014, where every single drop of Burgundy wine is being allocated around the world. But in those days, and the Burgundian used to say, well, how do we gonna get back into top of mind of people around the globe? And they started to do what we just did, and it became a phenomenon. So I'm inviting all of you today, tonight, to maybe reinvent the actual Sonoma anthem, or the American one. So I hope we can all rely on you to invent the, what's a good one? La, la. I can't do it. The Geo Party one, right? La, 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 friends today, I cannot believe it took us 10 years to create the experience we've created that you're going to live tonight. It's very unusual for Sonoma. Many of you have been to Raymond Vineyards. Many of you have discovered as well Buenavista and what we're doing there. One of the key elements which was actually missing was the Russian River. We love to talk about the triptych, you know, Napa, Sonoma, the beginning of it, Buenavista and Sonoma Town and obviously the Russian River, which is the key place for Pinot and Chardonnay. I'm specifically excited to be here with all of you because when you think about California as a Frenchman, you always think about this amazing place, which is Sonoma. Why? Because that's the extreme point to the ocean on our way to Asia. But this is as well, specifically if you make wine, the pinnacle of Pinot and Chardonnay. And why I'm specifically excited, because I had worked relentlessly over a year to convince the Deloche in 03 to let us lead this winery. And more specifically, because I came here when I was 11, with my grandparents, who many of you know the story, but just as a reminder, who were school teachers. 
And they wanted us, my sister and I, to really understand the sense of pioneering. The unbelievable American spirit that is all of you and your families and your ancestors. So we came here, specifically at Buena Vista, but we got the disease of the love of America. And my dream, personally, was always to come here and to really bring the gap or bring the energy between our two countries, France on one side and the U.S. Why? Because I don't think France can live without the United States, but I don't think either, and that's going to be my arrogant French side, I don't think either that the U.S. could potentially live without France in many ways. So if I take you on a quick chronology of history, I'm going to go to the obvious, Lafayette, Rochambeau, 1776, a very key moment of history, American independence. Luckily, and I'm very proud that our ancestors were here to help. Then thereafter, you probably remember the famous line, which is very important to us as wine people because he loved wine, and he actually brought French wine to the U.S., Thomas Jefferson. Mm -hmm. You all have read those history books when Thomas Jefferson is remembered as the man who said, we will be one nation if we go from one ocean to the other. America was only the, on the Atlantic side. What was missing the Pacific? What was in between that was really hurting the geography to be one? Louisiana all the way up to Canada. That was owned by the French. And very luckily, a crazy guy named Napoleon, you know, was fighting on the Eastern Bloc and needed more money. You know, and, and he sold to Jefferson and, and to the right people at that time, obviously, that whole center part of the United States to become one country. And I think this is exciting as a Frenchman because I'm very proud for whatever reason that we could contribute to the amazing history of the, you know, of the U.S. Now, reversely, I think what is very exciting today, specifically, is America has shown only to France, 1870, 1914, and 1939, an amazing example, which probably, and I do speak German, but not with the right accent, mm -hmm. I would not be, and we would not be who we are without the unbelievable influence of the United States and this great country that is America. So why I'm specifically thrilled to be here in Sonoma, in the Russian River, because everybody says it is the Burgundy of California. And this is very true. And what is as well true, finally, is the Deloach family, to put it in a context, and why I was specifically interested in this property way back is they originally come from France. Their name, as you can see on the board, is Deloge, but it used to be Delocious in a little town in the heart of the Loire Valley, the Valley of the King. And there's still a beautiful lake named Locious. They were Huguenots. The French king, in those days, you had no choice. It was far away from American democracy. You had to have one religion and one only. If you challenge it, you get out. And the Huguenots got kicked out, as you know, to Belgium, Holland, the United States. And very famous Huguenots like Rockefeller came to the U.S. and did what they did. The Deloach came here at that time, most likely in the 18th century when that happened. So we thought, how could we build, and this is the theme of today, how could we build a parallel between Burgundy in a strong way and France and California is thanks to the official logo of the Loach, which is the Fleur de Lis, right? Mm -hmm. What does that stand for? Charles, <laughs> the Fleur de Lis. Well, one of them's light. Prosperity, family, and all of the above. So that famous Lis got discovered and got you as the, the national emblem. What I love about the Loach, and this is the fun part of the winery, is not only the family got kicked by the king and the fleur de lis, but they decided when they came to American soil to use it. And why we love it, because at that same time, 
as we're going to do one experience which is all about Burgundy and Russian River today. It's all about what happened in the 18th century as well in Burgundy. For many of you, you may think that Burgundy was known way before that. The key moment as well of Burgundy blossoming to the world of wine was actually 1730, 1735, 1750. So today we brought the two worlds together for your enjoyment. So I could continue to speak for hours, but I won't. We're going to go and do the experience. What has been exciting is we all going to do a, a, a tour now, and everybody will be speaking about the small journey around the property. But we want you to know that we've decided to split the experience at Raymond, which has been very successful at the other wineries, into seven key parts. One, and the most important one, we believe, is the source you know, where we come from, which is the grapes. So Joe will tell us on the tour all about organic farming, biodynamic, and you will notice and wander around, we build the first theater of nature and the first consumer-friendly experience in Sonoma as far as organic farming. So all the people can come, they can wander, they can learn, they can experience the fruits, the vegetables, and the herbs, and really understand what we do. The second experience we really build is this room where we're going to come now is the appellation room, which is, I, we believe, very important for all of us is the future map of Sonoma. So we created a room where you could taste up to 20 different wines, Pinot Chardonnay from every area of Sonoma. After that, we're going to go and taste with Brian on barrels, which will be the barrel room. And that appears to all of us obvious, specifically you guys in the trade, as journalists. But in general, our guests typically cannot, in most of the wineries, taste on barrels. Which is crazy when you think about it, because this is the evolution of wine. So we created a whole room connecting with the evolution of wine, its transformation, and the taste of wine as it gets adolescent. So that's another experience.